foggy and kind of rainy looking out there with live cam. So of course, our Mike and RJ have been very busy this morning. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you, 6 a.m. on your Thursday, March 21st, and both those guys just got even busier. <laughs> That's right. Thanks for joining us today. Let's go ahead and start with RJ, who's had a... Well, you know, a very interesting morning. I yeah, think. guys, uh, definitely things picking up out there. So the biggest thing that we're seeing now is this 18-wheeler uh, that appears to be jackknifed here, I-35 southbound at Ben City Road. So remember, right before the break, we were talking about an incident on the southwest side, the Von Army, the Fisher Road area, affecting our area, our people out, drivers in the Somerset area, right? This just popped up maybe about 5, 10 minutes ago, 35 southbound at Ben City Road. Thank you to TransGuy for putting up this shot for me uh, in sort of a quick turnaround here. We have at least uh, that one left hand lane that's blocked right now but again this is a developing situation out here southwest side uh, 35 southbound for all of our drivers in that area right there you guys mentioned the uh, the other incident that we were following throughout the five o'clock hour this is i-10 westbound at 1604 we had a car a vehicle that became fully engulfed in flames during our five o'clock hour we actually caught that on our trans guide cameras and we have video of that so let's go ahead and roll that exactly what we saw so again pulling back the curtain i was on the phone with trans guide and this car just basically uh, again, fully engulfed in flames. We saw black smoke go up into the air. Again, the I-10 westbound lanes at 1604 uh, caused a pretty significant backup. So we come out back out to me here real quick on TransGuide. There we go. And this is our current situation out there. And you could see just based on the weather conditions that we are kind of getting a tough time getting a good shot out there. But this is exactly what our maps are indicating right now. So east of 1604, I-10 west, traffic is now backing up to North Greytown Road. Uh, so for all of our drivers coming in from the Seguin area headed to 1604 probably going to run into this right now and we also had okay so we're going now to the southwest side and this is our crash here uh the jackknife 18 wheeler out there Benton City Road again causing some issues here for all of our drivers on 35 southbound in between 410 and uh, loop 1604 so let's go back out to that one real quick because again that car fire has been out for some time but still causing some delays and we will continue to get more information on the situation here with this jackknife 18 wheeler of course there's been a lot of rain missed out there on the roads Mike how are things looking outside this morning it is damp and uh, just kind of murky out there with all the the rain and the fog one thing I want to point out though uh, this this loop is one hour. Notice how as this loops back on through, there was basically nothing out here to the southeast, and these things have really started to blow up quite quickly. And right here at uh, Quero, you can see we've got a lot in the way of some lightning strikes that are being detected. Everything is moving off to the northeast at a pretty good clip, and even though these have some fairly hefty uh, rainfall rates associated with them, and I want to check this out, and you can see that uh, rain rate is coming down here at a about these usually light kind of purple areas, we're looking at uh, five, six, seven inches per hour. Now that doesn't mean you're going to get that much because like I said, they are moving at a really good clip off to the northeast at 30 miles per hour. But that is just some of that uh, that blinding rain out there that if you're on the road or you're on the highway, you want to, you know, kind of pull over for a minute as these move on through. And then further down, we've got another kind of line, if you will, from Victoria, Yorktown, right through Poth and uh, Floresville, some lightning strikes being detected with this as well. Notice how this cell, which is moving in toward Elmendorf, this whole wave is kind of coming in here on the uh, east side of town. So where that big uh, car fire, vehicle fire was there on the east side of town, unfortunately, first responders there are going to be uh, getting drenched with some of these storms. And then right down here on the southwest side, going down 35, we've got a couple of more cells that are moving in up to the north. In San Antonio proper, we've got just a couple of uh, couple of spots right here just past downtown and you can see just moderate rain associated with those but again we're going to be on the lookout for these to continue to grow so don't be surprised if you start to hear on the southwest side south side I should say uh, some thunder and see a few lightning strikes out there but the biggest threat is going to be here to the south east to the east and to the southeast where some of those may become strong potentially severe there is the chance here in town but again the better chance of something strong to severe where the atmosphere is more unstable is further off to the east we do have a lot of fog out there down to three quarters of a mile visibility right now in u valley fog pretty much all around the entire area it's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning a bunch of oak out there 
Now, it'd be nice if the rain could wash some of these, this pollen out of the, the atmosphere, but obviously we are getting into oak season. Temperatures are in the 50s and 60s right now. They're not going to be moving this morning. We will have a little break in the action early afternoon, then a couple of more showers and storms starting to pick up as we go into tonight in a high temperature of 71. So after the rain today, nice looking forecast details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. See you in a while. This morning, San Antonio police still looking for two people. They say robbed an armored truck crew at gunpoint. Happened yesterday morning. A Brinks truck was making a delivery on Austin Highway near Harry Wurzbach when two robbers ordered the crew onto the ground. The robbers stole money from the truck and then took off. No one was hurt. If you have any details that can help detectives, please call SAPD. Looking ahead, former San Antonio police officer James Brennan's upcoming trial will happen in Bear County. Brennan is charged with the 2022 shooting of San Antonio teen Eric Cantu in a McDonald's parking lot. So his attorneys wanted to change the trial's venue because of extensive media coverage. His lawyers argued an impartial jury would be impossible to come by. However, District Court Judge Joel Perez didn't buy it. The trial is set to start in November. In your other morning headlines, Americans being evacuated from Haiti as the crisis there escalates. Officials warn the country could soon run out of food. As ABC's Perry Russell reports, over 1,000 Americans are still in Haiti as gang violence spreads. This morning, the race to get out of Haiti. 14 evacuated Americans, including eight children, landing at Orlando International Airport in Florida. The biggest stress about this was that we were dealing with little kids. Philippe Armand was evacuated. He's finally reunited with his son, Julie. The very difficult part was getting around and making it to the airport for the, to fly out. Philippe leaves behind the chaotic echoes of gunfire and blood-stained streets where fingers rest inches from triggers. Gangs have taken over entire neighborhoods, now launching attacks in Haiti's capital of Port-au-Prince. This man says his neighborhood is in the hands of bandits. ABC's Matt Rivers in Haiti. It's not hyperbole to say that the only thing that's standing in between gangs completely taking over this country are a couple thousand police officers. One of those officers telling Matt they are outgunned and outmanned. The U.S. State Department now airlifting Americans out of Haiti, flying them to the Dominican Republic. Our hope is uh, to keep these options available for American citizens who need it, uh, and, and the feasibility and the assessment of that work um, is going to be ongoing. Philippe Armand's plane to Orlando was chartered by the state of Florida. We've had 554 people reach out to us and contact us, asking for assistance getting out of Haiti. Philippe says he's thankful to be home back with his son. We're very grateful um, to everyone that made this possible. There is another layer to this crisis. Haiti is on an island and ports are closed. There is concern Haiti could run out of food in just two weeks. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. Well, a developing scandal involving one of the biggest athletes in pro baseball, superstar Shohei Otani, fresh off signing his historic $700 million contract last year is taking a hit. The Dodgers fired Otani's longtime friend and interpreter after he allegedly stole more, stole more than $4 million from Otani to pay off gambling debts. A spokesman for Otani says the baseball star has been the victim of a massive theft and, quote, we are turning the matter over to the authorities, end quote. A sports book in California involved in this scandal is currently under federal investigation. If you subscribe to more than one streaming service like Netflix, Disney, or Hulu, you aren't alone. A new report from Deloitte Insights found U.S. households spend around $61 a month on average for four services. So that's a $13 increase from last year's survey. However, researchers say most people told them they would cancel their favorite subscription if prices only went up by $5 a month. If you ever wanted to be an astronaut, this could be your chance. NASA accepting applications for astronauts, but there's a long list of requirements. You must have a master's degree in a STEM field, which is science, tech, engineering, or math. And applicants must successfully complete NASA's long-duration flight physical. Selected astronauts will join NASA's Artemis program, which is preparing to land the first woman and the next man on the moon. Diabetes Alert Day is coming up next Tuesday on the 26th. University Health will hold a resource fair focused on the disease and you'll have the chance to learn more about it.
Plus, you can learn more about A1C and speak with medical experts. The Texas Diabetes Institute is hosting the event, and you are encouraged to register beforehand. We have a link to do that on our website at KSET.com in the KSET community section. Glad you're with us on this busy Thursday morning right now, 610 and 60 degrees. After the break, a San Antonio doctor is back home after a remarkable climb to the top of one of the world's tallest mountains. Why she says donating an organ doesn't need to slow you down. Outside with live cam, grab a rain jacket and an umbrella today and actually in the last hour or so that we've been on the air, as Mike was saying, some of these showers and storms are starting to pick up the pace. I'll have another look at radar straight ahead. Welcome back at 614. So we have been following the journey of a university health doctor who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro to show that organ donation doesn't limit your lifestyle. She reached the summit last week on World Kidney Day and KSAT's Courtney Friedman met up with her this week on her first day back to work in the lab. Yeah. Was it negative? Uh, oh, it's negative. Dr. Kelly Hitchman is back in her lab at University Hospital, but just days ago, she was here at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. We were six and a half days to the summit and a day and a half back down. This is Barranco Wall. This is that 800 foot vertical. So you can't see it here, but those are like little people scaling, scaling the wall. She did it to prove a life-saving point that you can donate an organ and still live life without limits. In 2021, Hitchman donated a kidney to a complete stranger. For 14 years, she's led a team that looks for compatible transplant patients and donors. She's seen her patients suffer. It's got to be terribly frightening. Uh, and then to go on the deceased donor wait list and be told that the average wait time in the nation is five to seven years has to be unbelievably daunting. That's why this team of 13 kidney donors and one surgeon climbed Kilimanjaro for the 100,000 patients on the donor wait list. And I can say without a doubt, donating a kidney is far easier than climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. You can donate and still have a full life. Absolutely, absolutely. A full life with no additional medication, no dietary changes, no changes to your physical fitness routine, no limits. She hopes people can see donating an organ has truly brought her strength, her abilities, and her purpose to unwavering new heights. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Quite the feat. Well, morning commuters are going to have to climb a bit of a mountain this morning, depending on where you are going. Yeah, a lot of trouble spots out there, RJ. Yeah, guys, especially for our drivers on the far east side and right here on the far southwest side. As we take a look here at this jackknife 18 wheeler 35 southbound at Ben City Road, we have at least one main lane shut down here on the far left hand side. Now, traffic is slowly getting through this area. Again, this is a shorter highway here, a smaller, narrower highway. I 35 southbound at Ben City Road. This jackknife 18 wheeler has been there for some time now. And I've been kind of watching the crews out here. We, the only thing that I've seen for the most part has been some emergency officials. It does not look like we're getting anywhere close to clearing this out anytime soon as we take a quick look at our maps and see exactly what we're looking at. So again, this is Benton City Road. It's going to extend all the way past to uh, Quintana Road in this area here. So if you're coming in from Fisher all the way to 1604 on 35 southbound, you're going to run into this uh, vehicle out there. This crash, this 18-wheeler jackknife on 35 southbound at uh, Benton City Road. But again, we mentioned in the east side of town because this was the other thing that we've been following over the past hour or so and we still have a pretty good backup here. We had a vehicle fire and as I've been looking at the trans guide cameras in this area, we speculated a little bit earlier that this may have been a trailer of some type of big rig or an 18 wheeler. That looks like that might actually be the case out there. Either way, it is still causing major delays here. I-10 westbound at loop 1604 for our drivers on the far east side in the Converse area. We have at least one main lane block there, westbound lanes of I-10. Now, as we come a little bit closer to the inner part of San Antonio, we have a rollover crash that's being reported on I-10 eastbound at Roland Avenue. Traffic starting to back up a little bit here towards uh, Giver Street. So something to keep in mind if you are driving on the near east side. So, yeah, just a lot of activity taking place. Let's go. Let's show you the latest shot here from our camera there. I-10 westbound at 1604 and uh, we it looks like there's actually that trailer there and we're getting a little bit more of a visual exactly of what may have caught fire earlier because uh yeah, it definitely uh, got caught fire quick and was engulfed in flames there for a bit but our fire crews managed to put that out still causing pretty good delays there on the east side. Thank you RJ.
All right, roads are wet, obviously, yes. and as you know, the buses really start to get rolling this morning. We're starting to see some of those cells developing and going to be moving on through here. So there may be some pockets of some heavier rain as we're you know really getting into the heart of the morning commute. So showers and a few thunderstorms. We've got that fog out there and just mist and drizzle too. So roads are, are damp aside from those heavier downpours. And then 71 after school today, and we'll have a little bit of a lull in the action, but it's going to pick back up then later on uh, this evening with a couple of more showers and thunderstorms around here. All right, before we get to radar, another quick check that we are counting down to, of course, the eclipse. It is now just 18 days away on the 8th. And if you're in the area of totality, temperatures may drop a you know, about 10 degrees or so, it'll be like uh, the sun, well, obviously the sun going down, you know, as, as things cool down very, very briefly there. And we just had a big meeting about it yesterday, and we've got everybody covered in the in, Entire path of uh, totality around here, so make sure you stay tuned. All right, this is what it looks like over there at 10 at 410. And as I was talking about uh, just a little bit earlier, how these things have really started to blow up just in the past um, about hour, hour and a half maybe. And this one cell right here on the southwest side of town, and notice how it's got that purple area in it right there, and that's where you're starting to see. And this is going to be developing and getting some uh, some lightning strikes associated with it, as is this cell right there around Sutherland Springs, heading in toward Elmendorf. But that one spot right there, and I just want to check out what uh, the rainfall rate is. Again, these things are really dumping a whole lot of rain very, very quickly. Now they are moving along at a good, say, 30 miles per hour, so it's not just sitting in one spot. But as far as the rainfall rate with that cell right there, we're looking at six, uh, six and, and a half inches per hour. So that's kind of blinding rain as you're driving along. As far as any hail, I want to see if anything, because there is the threat for a little bit of hail and just want to check and see if radar's picking up anything. And we are not seeing any hail associated with any of these storms right now, but we can see some uh, pretty high winds as well. So to put these in motion again, this is continuing to work its way up on the southwest side of town. We've got yet another decent cell developing here in uh, Atascosa County and then further on out to the east right here. Elmendorf sliding off to the east. This one cell, as you can see, we've got lightning strikes here heading up in toward Lavernia and this extends and this has been again also kind of filling in and instead of just spots, it's become one line sliding up there to the east. And this is where the, the biggest threat is going to be further on down to the southeast later on this morning. A lot of heavy rain. One cell just moved through Cuero. Another big one's going to be moving on through thick fog around here. So visibility is reduced not only with, uh, you know, not to mention when if you get in one of those heavier downpours with that blinding rain and here's what's going on with the computer model. We will continue with the showers and a few of these storms, a couple of heavier downpours and the heaviest ones are going to be off here to the east and this is where the threat for uh, severe weather is. It does include the San Antonio area, but a lesser chance. Just going to have to watch out for the high winds and hail. We'll have uh, still a few of these showers and storms and then like I said more are going to be picking up later on tonight and again this is the, the climb, excuse me the storm prediction center has the two on a scale of one to five scattered showers thunderstorms potentially severe high winds and hail and that smaller threat although one or two of these could uh, produce a little bit of hail as well as some of those stronger winds so just keep that in mind throughout the morning hours 80 tomorrow 75s over the weekend another chance of rain on Monday more after this You might be used to living with your albuterol asthma rescue inhaler, but it's a bit of a dinosaur because it only treats your symptoms, not inflammation. Treating both symptoms and inflammation with rescue is supported by asthma experts. Finally, there's a modern way to treat symptoms and asthma attacks. Air Supra is the first ever dual action rescue inhaler that treats your asthma symptoms and helps prevent attacks. Air Supra is the only rescue FDA approved to do both. Air Supra is an as-needed rescue inhaler and should not be used as a maintenance treatment for asthma. Get medical help right away if your breathing does not improve, continues to worsen, or for serious allergic reactions. Using Air Supra more than prescribed could be life-threatening. Serious side effects include heart problems, increased risk of thrush, or infections. Goodbye to you. Welcome to the modern age of dual-action asthma rescue. Ask your doctor if Air Supra is right for you. 
In your morning consumer headlines, YouTube is launching new support for MultiView, which allows users to watch up to four channels. For now, it's only available on iPhone and iPad. However, MultiView will be available for Android users in the coming months. Apple is streamlining helpful information for its products in a newly added documentation page on its website. It provides links to user guides, repair manuals, specs, and downloads all in one place. Everything is categorized and searchable from the Mac and iPhone to AirPods and Vision Pro. Lego and the makers of Fortnite are now letting creators design and build their own islands within the game using Lego elements. There are four templates to get everyone started, and then you are limited only by your imagination. That's cute. <laughs> Time now, 626 and 60 degrees for now. RJ's been a little busy this morning tracking a couple of incidents. This was the first one where there was a big fire earlier out there on the far east side. And then we have this one down, a jackknife 18-wheeler affecting some lanes on San Antonio's southwest side. RJ's got more on both coming up. If you're just now waking up or clicking on ksat.com to watch the live stream, it's kind of a yucky morning out there. We've got low clouds, we've got some mist, and in a few places, we've actually seen some showers and thunderstorms, and that, as you could expect, has affected traffic in some spots. Yes, it has. Good Thursday morning. It is 6.30 on March 21st, and it's also been a little foggy out there. Yeah, you know it's a big deal on the roads when we start off with RJ Marquez. <laughs> Yeah, guys, um, no laughing matter here. As a matter of fact, southwest side, big mess out here for our drivers that are in the Von Army, Somerset area. As you take a look behind me, our trans guy traffic cameras, we had a jackknife 18-wheeler. Uh, this happened on the southbound lanes of 35 at Benton City Road. I want to say about 6 o'clock uh, this morning. So we still have this 18-wheeler that's still out there. It's caused at least a one of the main lanes to be blocked right now. Now, traffic is slowly getting through this area, but again, causing a significant delay here for our drivers headed southwest. West if you're coming from the Fisher Road area, again, the Von Army area, keep this one in mind because you're definitely going to run into some traffic troubles out here. As we take a look at our maps and you do see this is crash actually being reported a little bit right before 1604. So 35 South right before 1604 traffic backed up all the way to Quintana Road. It's going to be about a 15 miles per hour that you're getting through this area right there. 35 Southbound at uh, Benton City Road. The other major thing that we've been following throughout the entire morning was this uh, vehicle fire that was reported around uh, 515 this morning. So that has completely kind of caused a delay here on the I-10 westbound lanes at loop 1604. And we had some video of a uh, trans guide video that we rolled on a little bit earlier. Let's go ahead and we can see if we could show that. And you do see here that this uh, this incident caused this uh, vehicle here to be fully engulfed in flames. After getting a little bit clearer look, it looks like there may have been a, a trailer attached to a vehicle. And that looks like it may have been actually what caught fire earlier this morning. But either way, causing a big mess out there for our drivers on the far east side in the Converse area. As we come back out to our maps here real quick and again show you a little bit of backup here all the way to Greytown Road as you head into the 1604 area. So those are the two biggest things we've been seeing out there. Of course it's been very busy because of some slick conditions, wet conditions. Mike, how are things looking outside this morning? Yeah, it's still very wet out there, kind of murky, foggy in some places. Uh, right at the, at the top of the show, uh, that shot over there by the airport didn't look too bad. Now over there by 10 to 410, as you can see it is a bit murkier. Granted, this camera's on top of the building out there, but we do have a lot of fog around here, as well as uh, some pretty good downpours that have been brewing and really getting going in roughly the past hour and a half. Case in point, here in town on the uh, south side, as you can see, right here in uh, northern Atascosa County, we've got these heavy, heavy downpours right here, and these are continuing to work their way up to the north to almost northeast at a fairly good good clip at roughly um 25 to 30 miles per hour. But as you can see, we don't have any lightning strikes associated with these as of yet. However, if you are again right there around Palo Alto College, you're getting some of these heavier downpours near Mitchell Lake and Garza Crossing uh, sliding up to the north uh, Columbia Heights, uh, Lackland Air Force Base. You're going to be getting some of these heavy downpours in at least the next 15 minutes. And then as this continues to work its way on up, another batch of this heavy rain is working its way 
further up to the north. Further off to the east, we've got from Calaveras Lake, Elmendorf, uh, Sutherland Springs, heading in toward Lavernia. Some of these heavier downpours, and as you can see, these do have some lightning strikes associated with them as well. And this whole band, notice how this thing has really started to kind of uh, form up into one big line, and it continues again to work its way up to the north. And it's further off here to the east where we are going to be seeing the chance for or the better chance for some of these to become strong, potentially severe. Don't have anything right now. Haven't seen any any hail that's been detected by radar as of yet. Just some uh, fairly hefty downpours and of course associated with some of these thunderstorms, you are going to get <clears throat> excuse me, some very strong winds, but the better chance of rain over here, a uh, better chance of something potentially severe. Goliad, Victoria, Edna further off to the east and to the uh, to the southeast. Visibility um, head out I 10 into the hill country. It is very low head out 90 to the west. Look at that Hondo as well as Uvalde both down to one mile visibility. A lot of fog all around here. It is going to be sticking around a bunch of oak out there. Update account comes out later on this morning. So we've got showers, storms, low 70s today. So we're going to get a break in the action. Storms going to pick back up again. Just a few of them then late this afternoon, more likely dinner time, early evening hours and then tomorrow. Good looking day, but it's going to be hot, low 80s, although humidity is going to be held in check. Back down to the mid 70s, pretty much normal temperatures this weekend. A couple of showers late Sunday and to start off Monday. And then next week is going to be sunny and warm. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. The attorney of a local mom accused of pranking her son's bully with a drink that sent that child to the hospital is speaking out. Hmm. Shot went viral across the country after it was posted on the Bear County Sheriff's Facebook page. Lucero Costa joins us live in the studio with how the attorney is responding. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Steph. Her attorney is basically saying the Bear County Sheriff's Office should have never gotten involved. Attorney Nico LaHood says his client, Jennifer Rossi, a mother accused of giving her son's alleged bully a non toxic concocted drink should have never been charged and that she didn't break the law. So Jennifer Rossi's name and mug shot that you're seeing here went viral in early March when the Bear County Sheriff's Office posted information about her arrest on its Facebook page. Rossi is accused of giving her son's alleged bully a mixed sports drink containing vinegar, lemon and salt. Earlier this month, deputies were called to Legacy Traditional Schools Alamo Ranch in West Bear County after a student felt nauseous and had a headache after consuming the drink and then was taken to the hospital. Rossi told deputies and the school's principal that she made the drink, gave it to her son and directed him to give it to the classmate. LaHood said the incident at Legacy Traditional School Alamo Ranch should have never should have been handled at the principal's office, not in the criminal justice system. Seems like it, there, a, a crime has been manufactured to fit a circumstance that's not even criminal. And that's that what is apparent to us that there are apparent conflicts in the sense that the complainant's mom works for the school and the school district PD. So Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says he stands by his department's decision to make this a criminal case, saying you can't take the law into your own hands. The sheriff says posting Rossi's mugshot was a warning to the community, quote, so that people know that there are consequences attached to your actions. Now, Rossi's case is pending a grand jury indictment, but her lawyer says the district attorney's office has the option to reject the case. The DA's office said it could not comment on a pending case. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Well, there are questions about what led to the deaths of Savannah and Caden Krieger. Their bodies were found Tuesday near Tom Slick Park. Investigators believe that Savannah killed her three-year-old son, then turned the gun on herself. It's a situation her mother says she just cannot comprehend. I want to know, like, what led up to this? What, if she did do this, like, what could have made her feel that she was alone? Now, she asked not to not show her face on camera. As for a motive, it's still not clear for now. Nancy says she's left without her daughter, grandson, or answers. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a gun was found nearby, and deputies are still investigating. A nearly week-long sit-in protest in Uvalde has come to an end. Brett Cross, guardian of victim Uzziah Garcia, stayed outside of the Uvalde Police Department headquarters for six days in a row, demanding three officers were among the first to respond at Robb Elementary be fired or they should resign. 
Uvalde PD Assistant Chief Homer Delgado also backed Cross's right to be out there and demand accountability. This comes after what some are calling an embarrassing independent investigation into the Robb Elementary shooting by Jesse Prado that cleared all Uvalde officers of any wrongdoing. Council members and families have voiced anger over the report and Delgado says he finds issues with it too. I can't honestly say that I'm completely comfortable with it. Uh, there are some issues that I have concerns about. I, there are things that I would like to, to be straightened out. So if, if we do ever have an opportunity to discuss it, um, I would definitely ask some questions. Brett Cross says he hopes that opportunity comes at the next U Valley City Council meeting on March 26th. Looking ahead, it's almost time for a new Know My Neighborhood. The KSAT 12 team is taking the 6 o'clock show on the road. So tonight we are heading to the Northern Hills and Valencia neighborhoods on the northeast side. And KSAT team will host a live neighborhood newscast from the 19th Hall Bar and Grill at the Northern Hills Golf Course. Here's a preview. Everything is close by. I don't want to live downtown San Antonio. I want to live out in the outskirts, and this is just right. If you look at a big map of the city, look for the green spaces. This is one of those big green spaces. And if you want a place to raise a family that's safe and nice, this is a great neighborhood to be in. Although we don't have a lot of children here right now, I think we're going to see more growth. This disregard for other people's property, I don't like that. Find something else to do with your time. We uh, do have younger kids in the neighborhood. I get anxious when cars are driving down our road. And I know the cops are very busy, but they do not come through here and patrol very often. We put on a lot of fun events, you know, for the community. And we just don't often have the turnout that I think we could have. We have a fabulous senior center. I come every day of the week. I exercise three days a week over there. And then I play rummy cube five days a week. For us to have this here, to live here with this, it's a well-kept secret. Outside of that though, we don't, we don't have a whole lot. Sometimes we'll have to drive a little bit further to go to some of the other parks. Family and community is what relationships are what life is about. Check it out tonight in our 6 p.m. newscast, but right now 641 a.m. 60 degrees. Look out there with live cans. It's been kind of a rainy, foggy morning, and we've had problems on the roadways, and still a cool 60 degrees for now until things warm up starting tomorrow. We'll be right back. About quarter to seven, welcome back. New statistics show 93% of Gen Z and millennials want to improve their mental health this year but 22% don't believe that'll happen. Case at 12 producer Haley Powers explains why it could be difficult to find a therapist. I'm in therapy. I need help. These words are hard for many people to say. The stigma of seeking therapy is decreasing, but it's still out there, and a lot of people are afraid to admit they might need help. The Thriving Center of Psychology released a new report about Gen Z and millennials. It shows the top three reasons these groups are seeking therapy, including anxiety, depression, and stress. We don't have the access to homes. We're not moving out at 18 and then just getting our lives started. Um, we're not all getting married in our early 20s. And then you add all the political strife, you add all the, the difficulties with kind of getting through our daily lives and the financial struggles. It's just getting harder and harder to kind of just survive. So what can you do if you need some advice? Find a therapist, but don't settle on one. Dr. DeGain says finding a therapist is similar to dating. Give it a couple of tries, and if you don't feel comfortable... Your first therapist may not be your last therapist. When it comes to picking a therapist, Dr. DeGain says find someone who works with your schedule, finances, and most importantly, to go in with an open mind. The unknown is always scary. That's what kind of makes it that in the first place, but growth is also part of the unknown, and you won't really know until you try. People here in Texas are looking for help. San Antonio ranks 28th out of the top 30 cities with people interested in getting into therapy. Austin, Fort Worth, El Paso, Dallas, and Houston are also on that list. There's the political um, differences that happen even within the state. There's the 
kind of pushing down of mental health um, support and the, the rise of the stigma around that. On top of political differences, social media also takes a huge toll on our mental health. While it's meant to connect us, it can end up tearing people down. It also shows people's best sides. You don't see the struggles they're going through, how difficult things are, how long it takes to get certain progress. You just see the end results and you start comparing to the best and it makes it really difficult to understand the humanness of everyone else. Self-care is also important for your mental health. So put down your phone, get outside, see family and friends, and don't be afraid to get help. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. It's now 647. Let's go ahead and check back with RJ. Looks like there's still problems there at I-35. Yeah, guys, a lot of things popping up across the city, so hang with me here. Let's get through all of this. I-35 southbound, Ben City Road. So the Von Ormy area coming in from Fisher Road, right before you get to 1604, we have southbound lanes here blocked, at least one main lane because of a jackknife 18-wheeler. Let's show you our maps real quick, and you do see that traffic is backing up to Quintana Road. Again, this is for all of our traffic heading into 1604 from 35 south. Uh, this crash is just popped up on our maps right now. 151 eastbound at Loop 410. Very busy area to begin with. You see that traffic is backed up all the way to West Military Drive. I have a trans guide shot I'll show you here in just a bit. But again, 151 eastbound right there, right before 410, backed up all the way to West Military Drive. Take you to the east side of town now. We have a rollover crash being reported I-10 eastbound at Roland Avenue. Traffic here backed up all the way to South New Braunfels Avenue. Keep this one in mind if you're headed out on the near east side. And going back to the far east side, we're still seeing some heavy delays here because of that car fire from earlier this morning. I-10 westbound at Loop 1604. Traffic getting through at about five miles per hour. Backed up all past Greytown Road now. And uh, and again, this one it happened around five o'clock and crews are still out there taking care of this situation. Take one more quick look here at our TransGuide cameras. And here's the situation there. 151 eastbound at 410 West. A major mess out there for all of our drivers coming in from the SeaWorld area. Major mess all over uh, several parts of the city right now. You're not surprised mm -hmm. by any of this, are you? No, RJ? definitely not. No. <laughs> we were even being tongue in cheek that they were going to be extra busy today and they have been. They have oh, yeah, been. Definitely. You and well. the latest with the weather, we were talking about how these uh, showers and storms have been developing pretty quickly around here, and we've had the the threat for some to become strong. We've got a new uh, severe thunderstorm watch that was just issued by the National Weather Service. First of all, out there at uh, 10 at 410, uh, just murky conditions, some low clouds, a lot of fog. And notice the uh, the line of showers and storms and how this is really starting to, uh, to build here right around Gold as well as Victoria, everything kind of moving off to the northeast. And this is just some really hefty downpours. As you can see, there's not a lot of lightning associated with it, but a little bit further up to the north. Here's this line from just about Quero uh, over towards Stockdale and then heading in toward Elmendorf. And again, everything moving off to the northeast as far as a little bit closer in. You can see this is really starting to uh, kind of kind of fill in here a little bit on the uh, southeast side of Bear County from China Grove down through Palo Alto College and in towards Somerset. And we've got some pretty decent downpours associated with this, but nothing, you know, it's coming down four or five inches per hour gully washers, but uh, no lightning associated with these yet. No hail. I haven't seen any hail as of yet, and uh, we don't have anything else reaching or trying to reach any sort of severe levels, but these are some very hefty downpours, so if you are driving, you're going to be running into this, so just watch it there again on the uh, south and southeast side right there along uh, 410 on the south side with some of these heavier downpours here heading down 37 to the southeast, and like I said over there by China Grove. Now, as far as the threat for severe weather, like I said, new severe thunderstorm watch has just been issued for our southeastern counties. This does include uh, Quero, Victoria. This is in effect up until 1 o'clock this afternoon. Storm Prediction Center, and this is pretty much where Storm Prediction Center had forecast this for the better chance for something severe. We're not seeing anything severe as of yet, but be on the lookout. And then even a little bit further off to the west, including San Antonio up into portions of the hill country, you just have to be on the lookout for one or two of these storms to become a bit stronger. So here's the uh, computer model again down here to the southeast. It's doing a pretty good job and what's actually happening is pretty much coinciding with what models were indicating down here to the uh, the southeast and still a few scattered showers a couple of thunderstorms back on out to the west and this is going to be the case into the early afternoon hours breaking the action 
Then a few more are going to be developing later on this evening. Then in behind that, we've got that great stretch of weather. It's going to be hot tomorrow, uh, but humidity is going to be OK. Then we sort of drop back down to the mid 70s, normal temperatures over the weekend. Chance of rain Sunday late into Monday. That front's going to dry us out warm but dry much of next week. We're going to wrap things up after this. All right, one last check of weather here before the 7 o'clock hour. If you're about to head out, there's been a lot going on. And we start right here at 35 southbound at Bent City Road. This 18-wheeler was jackknifed a little while ago. Looks like they kind of got it straightened out a little bit. So uh, it looks like hopefully we could get this cleared out here in the next uh, hopefully 15, maybe 20 minutes or so. There are emergency vehicles out here at the scene. But again, southbound 35 right before 1604 at Bent City. Big uh, delays there in that area. The other major delay that we're seeing right now, 151 eastbound at uh, Loop 14. 10 West. So for this is going to be for all of our drivers coming in from the SeaWorld area as we take a quick look at our maps here and you do see that traffic has built up pretty fast here uh, backed up all the way past West Military Drive uh, again 151 a uh, pretty heavy uh, highway that a lot of people use to get into the downtown area from the far northwest side. So keep this one in mind. We will continue to keep you give you updates throughout our seven o'clock hour. Mike, take a look at radar right now. If you're uh, getting ready to hit the roads, we've got some uh, pretty hefty rain and now some lightning strikes being detected right near downtown from the south uh, from the east side back down to the southwest and then a lot more off to the uh, southeast. And that's where we do have the uh, severe thunderstorm watch, which is in effect up until one o'clock for our southeastern counties. Of course, some of these storms may become they have some strong winds and hail reaching severe levels. We're obviously going to Keep watching that and uh, we do have some pretty good fog out there, but just watch it with these heavier downpours because we're looking at, you know, five, six inches rainfall rates. So those are kind of gully washers. Well, watch out. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Thanks for joining us.